Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll continue our exploration of quantifiers and the need for a richer language. Let's recall from the previous session the syllogism, which was, it began with the line, all humans are mortal. And we decided in that previous session that translating this as H implies M didn't really capture all of the meaning that we want. So what we did, we used, so what we used were predicates. We used H of X, which means X is a human. We used M of X, which means X is mortal. And we used for all X. And that is a quantifier that we're drawing on our, our understanding from mathematics. And we could write, we could write this as for all x, if x is a human, then x is mortal. Now, let's think about a parse tree. We had a parse tree from propositional logic, and we can put that into quantificational logic. So in this case, what we have, there are two ways to do this. One is we could start the tree with the for all, or we could start the tree with the for all x. I'll choose to start it with for all x. And from that, we now have a parenthesis, and so what we have is this is now a statement. And in that statement, what we would have is that has the structure of an implication. The antecedent here is a predicate, and I'll choose to write that predicate as its own node, and then I'll write the variable that's quantified underneath it. So that will then be x, and that will terminate that part of the tree. Similarly, for the consequent, I would write the predicate m, and I would then put x. And so I have a parse tree. Now, let's Let's look at some alternatives that may not capture things quite right. Let's, let's try, let's try writing this. Suppose we see this and we try, we try putting the quantifiers this way. Let's say for all x, h of x, therefore for all x, m of x. And what would the parse tree for this look like? Well, now this has the structure of an implication. And so I would put the implication arrow. The antecedent would be the for all x. And then underneath for all x is the predicate h. And underneath that is the variable x. Similarly, the consequent, this is a quantified statement, and this is a quant this is a predicate, and then this is our variable. Having these trees, what we can do now is we can start doing what we recall from very early in our high school, which is compare and contrast. So what are the similarities and what are the differences? Well, the similarities are they both involve quantifiers, implication, and predicates. In each case, the predicate has a single node underneath it, in this case, which is the variable, and they have a different top-level structure. Well, let's, let's follow this one down. Here we have the implication, and on the antecedent we have a for all x, and now eventually we get to the variable. A question for you now is, is this variable and this variable the same? 
Could they be? Do they have to be? So now if you've reasoned that out, you'll see that the variable here and the variable here might be different variables. That is, there's, we'll explore these in subsequent sessions, but there's an idea of a scope and that the x here and the x here, sure, they appear to be the same little x's, but they might, but they might have very different interpretations. For example, so this is a difference between propositional logic and now predicate logic, is if in propositional logic, when we had a propositional atom that appeared, or a literal that appeared in multiple places, we knew it was all the same. That is, the semantics were that that thing was a T everywhere it appears in the tree, or an F everywhere it appears in the tree. Now, with predicate logic, we've lost some of that. We can't be sure that this is the same X. Therefore, we can't be sure that the predicates of them are the same X. And so it brings into question whether this is a legitimate parse tree or not. And the answer is, it's a legitimate parse tree. It captures this sentence, but it doesn't capture the English properly. Because this one would be one way that we can translate it, it is if, if everything is human, then everything is mortal. And that is almost certainly not what this is trying to capture. So that wouldn't be quite right. Another way that we might try translating this, which some people will try, and this is incorrect, we could try, how about if we say for all x, x is human conjoined with x is mortal. And if we do the parse tree, the parse tree for it will look this way. And instead of this implication, we'll have a conjunction. Now, let's look at the meaning of this. So what this means is everything is at the same time human and mortal. And that is almost certainly not capturing what we mean. Because, for example, a rock, all humans are mortal. So here, if X is a human, then X is mortal. Well, if X is a rock, then mortal, immortal, we actually can't tell. So we don't know the truth status of this part of the consequent when the antecedent is false. Here, we're asserting that everything is both a human and mortal, and we fail to capture some of this idea, which is, suppose that something isn't human, can we say anything about its mortality? Suppose that something is a non-human living being that eventually dies. So, a dog, for example. And we're unable to capture, in, the, in this sentence, we're, we're capturing things incorrectly, and here, we're not capturing things properly because we might say that this, everything is both human and mortal. And that, that's not what we're meaning. Now let's turn to the second sentence of Aristotle's syllogism, and that was Socrates is human. And the way that we translated that was there exists an X such that X is Socrates and X is human. Now, what, that, what we're asserting is there exists an X such that 
X is Socrates and X is human. Does that capture the idea that Socrates is human? Well, the answer is yes. Now, suppose that we try, suppose that we try, there exists an X such that X is Socrates, then X is human. And now let's reason this one out. So now we're saying there is, exists an X such that if X is Socrates, then X is human. That captures certainly part of this, but it doesn't capture everything. Because suppose that X is a rock. Now we're saying there exists an X such that X, it's not true that X is Socrates, and that is a false antecedent a false antecedent implies anything, so even a rock would satisfy this statement, and that's certainly not what we mean. What this is hinting at is that when we go into this richer language, we have to be really careful. In propositional logic, it was relatively easy for us to translate an English sentence into propositions, and certainly um, it's something that by now, by now in this course, you're probably pretty good at. When we get into quantifiers, some of you may find this is a little more challenging. And the ambiguities and inherent fluidity of English, so this word now is, the very word is, is brought into question. And there, unfortunately, there is no good translation from almost any natural language into a, a logic, and this is just a, an inherent part of natural language and being human.